What's up, you math nerds? Today I'm going to cover how to find the area bounded by two curves in the x direction and in the y direction. This was a common question that I had from a lot of you, so I thought it was worth exploring. So first we're going to do the area in the x direction, and then we're going to do the area in the y direction. Here are the timestamps. And if you like this video or like what I do, please go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel. You ready? Let's go. So because we're going to find the area in terms of x, we are going to have to find the distance between the top function f of x minus the bottom function g of x. And now we need to find those bounds. So we need to check when these functions are equal to each other. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it looks like we have 0 and 4. And on the graph, that means that they intersect at 0, 0. And on the top, we know that this is going to be 4. And we can figure out that y value by plugging it into any one of the functions. If you plug it into g of x, that's going to be 8. And that's going to be very helpful for when we find the area in terms of y. So now we know that our area is going to be from 0 to 4 of f of x minus g of x. So that's negative x squared plus 6x minus 2x. Let's simplify that. And now we're just going to use the first fundamental theorem of calculus to find the area here. I'm going to plug in the 4. We kind of already know this is going to be 0, but I'm still going to go ahead and plug in the 0 to show that we're still using the first fundamental theorem of calculus. Looks like we're going to get some common denominators. And it looks like our area is 32 over 3. So now let's get crazy and try to find the area in terms of y. It's going to be a little more complicated, but we should still get the same answer. Now, before we try to find the area in terms of y, I'm going to have to change our functions in terms of that subject variable, which is going to be y. So we're going to start with the second function. That's fairly easy. It's literally just y over 2 is equal to x. I'm just going to highlight that as my blue line. And now let's go ahead and do the quadratic function. And because we're trying to isolate the x variable, we're going to have to do the dreaded completing the square. Annoying, but obviously very useful in this case. So don't forget, you take the negative 6 divided by 2 and square it. That's equal to 9. So you introduce a 9 into the parentheses. And on the outside, you might think because you introduced a 9, you're going to introduce a negative 9 on the outside. But that's not really the case because don't forget, you technically need to distribute that negative sign into the plus 9 inside. And so really, you introduce the negative 9. So I'm going to go ahead and put a plus 9 outside the parentheses. This is my factored form, and that really helped us because that tells us that the vertex is 3, 9. We could have found that by graphing. I mean, it's a pretty simple quadratic. But look, up on top on my graph, I'm going to go ahead and actually put that coordinate there. That's going to be really helpful. You're going to see in a little bit. So back to our problem, we're going to go ahead and subtract the 9 to the other side. And I'm going to multiply everything by negative 1 to get rid of that negative sign that was on the right side. And so I have 9 minus y is equal to x minus 3 squared. Let's take the square root of both sides. Don't forget that you need to put that plus or minus. All right, let's go ahead and add the 3. And this is our answer in terms of y. Now, this is going to be important because we have two options. We have the 3 plus or minus root 9 minus y. Now, the positive one is going to be this part of the function that I highlighted in red. So let's go ahead and make that 3 plus root 9 minus y is equal to x. And the other side, I highlighted that in yellow. Hopefully, it's noticeable. And that's going to be the 3 minus root 9. Okay, so now that we had our functions, I'm going to go ahead and create some space on the blackboard because we still need to find the area. All right. Now, because we're going to take the area in terms of y, our radius or the distances between the two functions is going to be this horizontal radius that I'm about to draw in red. So if we're going to take the area of this, we're going to subtract the function on the right from the function on the left. That's all good. But let's see what happens as we continue going upward. There's going to be a point where the radius is going to be quite different. I'm going to color that in blue. Look at that. The function on the right is technically not the linear function, but it's actually part of the quadratic. So it's the 3 plus root 9 minus y. So that means that I'm going to have to set up two different areas. I'm going to cut this into two parts. And we have the first area. And we're going to have the second area. The first area is going to be bounded by the linear function and one of the quadratics. And the second area is going to be bounded by the two quadratic functions, all in terms of y. So let's just go ahead and do area 1. Area 1 is from 0 to 8. Now this is in terms of y. So again, look at how I got 0 and 8. 
zero is the bottom value in the y direction and then eight is going to be that value where the first area ends now i have the function on the right which is y over two minus the function on the left which is three minus root nine minus y dy let's simplify this a little bit zero to eight y over two minus three plus root nine minus y dy this is going to be pretty simple if i use the first fundamental theorem of calculus this is what i'm going to get Pay close attention on how I got this value that I highlighted in blue. All I did was use substitution and I did the radical power rule. Let's go ahead and plug in eight and we'll plug in zero. So it looks like my first area is 28 over three. So it looks like I need to continue creating some space on the blackboard here. Area two is gonna be bounded from eight to nine. Again, how did I find that? We know that it's gonna be eight because that's where it started. That's where the first integral ended. And it's gonna be nine because that is the top of the vertex, that is the maximum. And this is gonna be the right side of the quadratic in terms of y, and that's three plus root nine minus y, minus the left side of the quadratic in terms of y, so three minus root nine minus y. That simplifies quite nicely. If you're confused on how I integrated this the first time, let me just go ahead and show you. I did u is equal to 9 minus y, du is equal to negative dy, so negative du is equal to dy. And so now I have 2u to the 1 half times negative du, so negative 2u to the 1 half du, and I can use power rule. And this is negative 4 thirds u to the 3 halves. And now let me go ahead and plug in the 9 minus y back into my u, and use my parameters to find the area. And it looks like this area is just 4 thirds. So remember that the total area is equal to area 1 plus area 2. Area 1 was equal to 28 over 3, and area 2 was equal to 4 thirds. Adding those together is 32 over 3. And that is exactly the area that we got when we integrated this in terms of x. I hope you had fun.